Um, hey, so my name's Ben, and uh, on the chat I go by Muad'Dib because I have a Messiah complex. And um, but, but seriously, um, yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself because I talk to a lot of you under my pseudonym, and it's good to see so many people here that I really respect and enjoy talking to. Um, so I'm going to go uh, do a quick walkthrough for our CTF. I am going to be using a challenge from the 2020 all virtual CTF. So if you try to use the solutions I'm about to show you, it will most likely not give you any points. I don't know that for sure, but I don't think they will. So um, the CTF, you basically just log in. Um, the This year's CTF is just ctf.uniradio.org, and you can sign up, register, and then log in. And you can start a team. If you're an individual competitor, just make a team. You can be an army of one, uh, go you, or make some friends. I know that's hard for us, but uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's advantageous. So, um, oh, yeah, hey, good to see you too. Um, so basically, I'm going to start out. It's a Jeopardy style challenge. And so we, I'll just pick one. So this one says right hand rule thumb. And that sounds familiar for some reason. I think somewhere in my education, I learned about that. So it says, wow, listen to this. And it's a wave file. So I'll download the wave file. And uh, if we go to, well, I downloaded it. And basically, I can ingest this into any program I want, right? So let's try, I don't know, Universal Radio Hacker. Not GNU Radio, but based on GNU Radio, like most things. So I, if I look at the spectrogram, I can see there's some stuff going on here, but it's not, uh, I guess I could read it backwards or take a screenshot or something like that. I can also open up in Spectrum. If I want to open up a wave, wave files are a little weird when they do IQ because they're going to have a header and stuff like that. So you can change the file name to be, um, to be complex, complex signed. So like a CS16. So I can just rename the file radio.wave to radio.cs16, open that up, and then, hey, look at that. There's some stuff going on in the spectrum. I could also just play it back in GNU Radio. If I do that, I get a lot more control because GNU Radio is awesome. Seriously, it's awesome. Um, and so I can you know, see what's going on here, but it's going too fast. So I usually like to slow down the sample rate, go slow-mo. And then I can see that my flag is in here. It's backwards, but if I turn my head, I can see it and um, basically enter it in in the form that it's entered. There's also a doge in there, and it says uh, such nrsc5 which is hd radio so that gives me a clue as to what these um seemingly you know these ofdm carriers are uh so that that's kind of a tip off that like there might be another challenge where you want to use that because there's clearly a flag here and i can go punch that in on the scoreboard and win the day so um there you go that that's it but you don't win the day, you just win that challenge. It's like 10 points and there's a bunch of points on the board. So, um, yep, so that's uh, three minutes and 50 seconds. And I was told I have like 10 minutes. So now I'm gonna talk about uh, a tutorial that I wrote in GNU Radio. This is, has nothing to do with the CTF. I wrote a tutorial that does something that a lot of people get on the chat and ask about, which is how do I detect something and then show that I detected it. So if you go to wiki.gnuradio.org, you can look for tutorials. It's on the left-hand column. And this one is called Band Limited Threshold Detector. No matter how long I've been out of academia, I still tend to put these weird academic type names to things. It, it's just basically a threshold that you can limit by frequency. And so you can reject things that are to the left or right of a box. So we want to put a box around some signal. 
and detect it and show where in the spectrum we detected it. So basically running through this very quickly, um, I give the flow graph. First off, I set up the problem and then I you know, put the flow graph up here. And what I wanna do is generate some synthetic signal. So I show how we can simulate that with vectors and just basically put up some uh, narrow band and a wide band carrier and also we can modulate them with a square wave at random intervals so you get this sort of like jumping around random different uh, amplitude signals. Then from there we make our detector and we're going to use this entire thing is done with in tree blocks uh, with the exception of the very very end where I do just a very simple conditional like if it's above the threshold print it out and write it to a file. But other than that, this whole thing's done inside of Unit Radio. So I think a lot of us ask this question and say, oh, let me go figure out how to write an outer tree module. And I don't do DSP, so I'll probably do this poorly. Um, but, but if it works at the end of the day, great. But like really, there's already mechanisms in GNU Radio to do a lot of stuff. And I think that's where, for me anyways, it's been a beneficial just to learn how to use GNU Radio and all the mechanisms that are there. So, um, yeah, so we make uh, a box around some spectrum and we can actually draw lines on the plot and have them be adjustable so that the end result looks like this. So you have uh, the threshold I'm, I'm adjusting and then you have a lower frequency and an upper frequency that you can box out these intermittent carriers. So that big wideband carrier, we don't care about that but these little intermittent ones, like if you're doing some ham radio stuff and it's in an adjacent band to like some cellular carriers, you don't care about that. This would give you the ability to just look at that, but you can still ingest at a high rate so you can get you know good resolution. And so here you'll see just what's inside the box is shown down here in the bottom left. And then on the right, it's only the things that exceed the threshold. So as I'm lowering the threshold, you'll see the two little carriers pop up and then to the right, I did give some code here. This is just a very simple out of tree, not out of tree, this is just an embedded block. It's a Python snippet um, to basically print out, to, I'm, I'm tailing uh, the file here. So it just writes to file the bin number and uh, what the amplitude or the magnitude was in DB. So that's it, but uh, yeah. This was really fun to do. Someone showed me how to do this a long time ago. I will not take any credit. This is just something that someone passed, passed along to me a long time ago. And I think a lot of people don't realize that you can actually draw marker lines in the QT existing GUI. But we're gonna get away from QT anyway because we wanna do something way cooler. But anyway, this is something that people don't realize you can do. And the power of vectors in Guinea Radio is really, really big. And we've got some awesome tutorials not done by me that were really uh, fantastic. So please look at the tutorials. They're awesome. Okay. Thanks. That was now fun. I'm done. <laughs>